So issues of race, racism, and bias are all around us. And some of us have learned the hard way that our kids definitely recognize differences between themselves and others. Now, while we may think our three-year-old is too young to understand these concepts, they actually can. Isn't that right, Caitlin? Absolutely. So we've all had that moment when our kid blurts out something that embarrasses us. Kids are great at identifying patterns and categories at this age to help them make sense of the world. Here's a video of a group of children doing just that. Let's take a look. Do you know what racism means? Racism means... I don't know. Sometimes when he would see white women, he would kind of like, ah! Oh, shoot, no, it's not, it's fine. What color are your eyes? Brown. What color is your hair? Yellow. What color is your skin? Blue. We were at the airport, and he just said, that man is black. What color is your skin? He said, Mom. What we like? We like using beige. Beige. What color are you? Brown and white. He said to me, I don't want to be in line with the black man. I was caught off guard and embarrassed, and I said, you are black. If I got an ice cream and you didn't, is that fair? No. What color is the goldfish? Eat What color are you? Red. Green. If you got an ice cream and I didn't, is that fair? Yes. He asked me if white people had brown poop. Do you remember that? Yes. You want to do a take two on that one? <laughs> what color is your best friend? Brown and red. Do you have any friends that are different colors? Um, Nana and Mia. Okay. Is it better if most of your friends look like you? It doesn't matter. Do you love all your friends? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So look at all those beautiful children, Caitlin. Let's drill down into what our kids are actually seeing and processing. So tell us, when do kids start to recognize race and what do they understand about it? It's really interesting because for years, parents have thought that babies and even older elementary school kids were these kind of colorblind blank slates. And it's because textbooks didn't talk about it and the research wasn't really talking about it. But now we understand that they really can see and understand a lot more than we think at really early ages. It's a basic survival skill for them to categorize, to see what makes sense, to see what fits where, what's safe, what's unsafe, what's good, what's bad. We want them to do those things. So here's how that applies to race. So children about two months old can start to recognize the faces of their caregivers. Those are the people that they immediately associate with safety as long as they've been properly cared for. When they get to three and four months old, they start watching faces really closely because their eyes clear up and they can finally see and they can recognize familiar faces from a distance. And this is the earliest study that we found that shows three months olds can, there was a study done that three month old babies preferred the faces of those within their race to those outside of their race. And the research for this specific type of racial bias increases when babies get to six and nine months old. So does this mean that babies are racist from a very young age? Absolutely not. It just means that babies feel safer when they are around people that look like their primary caregivers, which most often look like them. They are associating safety with the familiar and people of other races are unfamiliar at this point. So when babies get to 12 and 18 months old, we see them start to point. And this is a lot, does a lot of things for them developmentally, but it also helps them with shared attention. They want them, they want you to notice what they're noticing. And so they will point out things like racial differences that they can't verbalize yet, but we can tell that they're seeing it. So kids get to two and three years old and they're able to start using race to explain why people have differences. I do this because I am brown. I do this because I am tan. And then when kids get to three and five years of age, they can really start to use race as a way to include or exclude the friends. I remember this happening to me in preschool. And this is really important because at this specific time, about four years old, kids really can grasp the difference between same and different. And if we're not careful and we don't make some time to intentionally explain these things to them, different can mean scary or bad. So young children don't really have a full idea or understanding of bias but they can exhibit those behaviors. 
So you mentioned this notion of, you know, sometimes people infer that their kids are colorblind at a young age. Um, can you break down for us what is wrong with saying we don't see color in our family? How is that a problematic, um, you know, way to think about the world? Sure. So I did a workshop um, through a parent coaching company that I work with called Weldon, and this question came up. And the biggest way that I like to address it is, well, first of all, when you think about it, it's just not true. If we've done all this research to say that we notice differences between us and other people at a very young age, the ability to notice that doesn't just go away at any age. So we want to make sure that we're being truthful. What people really mean when they're saying that is I'm not going to acknowledge the color of another person right now in this situation. When you think about it, that's not really helpful. When you're not acknowledging someone's color, you're not acknowledging their experiences, their lifestyle, and everything that they've been through. You're saying that it's not relevant. Um, and so that's not helpful in any situation. We also should stay away from things like skin color doesn't matter or we're all the same on the inside because they serve the same purpose. Because when you think about it, only certain people have the privilege to say that they don't see color. I have a lived experience that would never allow me to say that because I live in this skin and this color every day. And so it's important to understand that only certain people have the type of privilege that allows that to happen. So something we could say instead, something that's more helpful would be, I see everyone for who they are and I accept them that way. That is really helpful. So at what age can families start to engage in being anti-racist with their children? Because I think sometimes we might think, oh, they're too young, um, you know, we're gonna wait till they're older and maybe we'll go to a march or a protest and you know, they're too innocent right now. But is that really the case? No, the research shows us that they understand so much that we should really start as early as possible. Whenever parents ask me that question, I always say now. <laughs> as soon as you're asking the question, now. If you haven't done it yet, start immediately, as early as you can. No time like the present, I like that. Okay, so now we're gonna take some questions from our audience. So these are questions from real parents who are thinking and struggling with a lot of these issues. So this person asks, my child is five. How can I undo what has already taken hold in terms of racial bias? Is it too late? Mm, that's an incredible question. And the answer is it's never too late. But I always tell people that even though we have this research saying it's best to start these conversations as early as possible, it's never too late. Even if your child isn't asking the questions about it, it would be really easy to say, oh, I've missed my window. I'll just wait until later. But it's just not true. The research also shows us that children of all ages are really responsive to modeling and exposure. So modeling is you. You are the model for your child. So everything that you act out, everything that you have conversations about, they are watching you. And exposure is everything in the world around them right now. So making sure that they are hearing you have conversations about this, making sure that they are exposed to media with people of color as main characters, making sure that you diversify the people that they are exposed to. Sometimes it would feel like a lot of work and a really daunting, impossible task to try to undo everything that's already been done. I like to view it as fighting for what you want them to know instead of fighting against everything else. That's a great way to put it. I like that. Thank you for those tangible tips. I like that you gave us age ranges. You kept it real for us. We know that even babies are aware of these issues. Thank you so much. Keep an eye out for more great content on this topic made possible by our partnership with Johnson's, Avino Baby, and Desitin.